The problem that I want to talk about today is the simplest thing you can imagine. This question has been there since the beginning of the history. So this is not new. The question is that we have a form in our Power App and we also have a gallery. We want to show the selected gallery item in the form, edit it, save it, and move on to the next one. This form can be on the same screen or it can be on a different screen. So when the user clicks on the item to edit, it redirects the user to another screen and displays the selected item in the form. As easy as this question may sound, I don't know why still there are lots of people asking this and I want to cover it once and for all and put the rest to this case. So let's see what is the proper way of doing it what are the possible problems that may happen if you don't follow this rule or what you need to watch if you are not taking this approach. Let's get into it, it's gonna be fun. And short, of course. Inside SharePoint, I have a list called the products for demo. And inside Power Apps, I created an app which has a gallery and a form. The way that it works, I just connected this gallery to the list inside SharePoint. So whatever the item that I have here, those items have title, unit, price, and category. Category is a choice field, but these things are minor things. Now, the question is that if I have a gallery here, every item that I click on it and it is selected, the item should be displayed in the form. And the form that I have here is just a modern form that I've added it here. Modern or classic, they both work the same way. The way that I've done it so far, like many people do, is for the data source, I picked the products for demo. And for the item, because for this guy in edit mode, you have to have a specific item selected. I select this one and I pick the gallery dot selected item. At the moment, whatever the item that I pick, it works. I can pick, for example, electric toothbrush, then I can increase the price to 140 and I click on save. So it updates the price and we're good. Everything else can be updated. For example, this one, the smart water bottle, I can say bottles, for example, and I click save and bingo, it works. But this is not the right approach. And let me explain why. The problem with this approach is that typically when you are working with a gallery, the items is not just the list or the table name. Most of the time you have filter, table functions, and all those things here. Filter doesn't cause any problem. But if you are using the other table functions that they are working with the columns, like for example, rename column, like add columns, remove columns, things like that, that they change the schema of the columns so they add more columns, remove more columns, or change the name of the columns, now the selected item has a schema that does not match the original list or table. Which means when you come here from one side for the data source, it is connected to the list. And for the item, we are feeding it with an item with a different schema. So naturally it gives the error. Let me show you how. Here, for example, in addition of the unit price, I want to add another element called tax. I know there are multiple ways of doing it, so I don't necessarily need to go for this approach. But for now, I just say for the items, I want to add a calculated column. And that calculated column is going to be add columns. I open the bracket. And right after that, I say this column name is going to be tax. And the way that I want to calculate it is going to be this record dot unit price multiplied by, let's say we have 7% tax, so 0 0.07. And I close this bracket. We are good. It's not going to display it yet, but I can come here. I can select this card and I just insert another text here. So let me just drag and drop this guy here. At the moment, it's showing the gallery. But I can say, instead of gallery, show me tax. I can even make it better. So I can go right in the beginning of it. So I can say tax and then concatenate it with the tax value. So it's going to look like this. But oops, the form, the content, or whatever that it was supposed to show disappeared. So it's not about 
how it works right, right in the beginning. We want to connect it in a way that we have the freedom to come here and do whatever we want and still the form is bulletproof, so nothing breaks in it. And this is how you do it. For the form item, so let me pick the form itself, instead of saying gallery.inventory, we know that it is connected to products for demo. So instead of picking the item from the gallery, we pick the item directly from the products for demo, which means I need to look up the item from products demo where this record ID is equal to the gallery dot selected dot ID. Then I close the bracket. Everything works happily ever after. So at this moment, if I just come back here, I can do whatever I want. I can add or remove columns and things like that. And this form is always safe except for one thing, and you come here and say, remove columns, and you remove the ID field, or you rename the ID field, which this form is working based on that. But in reality, who's gonna do that? We are not gonna show it to the user or things like that, so we are good. Does it still work? Absolutely. Pick this one, for example, increase the price to 410, and I click on save, and everything works happily ever after. Now, why is it important? Because quite often the form is not in the same screen. This form is in a different screen. So when you make changes here, you really don't see the errors on the other screen. And if you're just passing the ID rather than the entire record that you capture from the gallery, again, you are safe on that side. Let me show you how you pass the ID just to the other screen. So I just add a new screen, let's say a blank screen, and this blank screen, rename it to scr underscore edit product. And here I just insert the form, right? This form is not connected to anything. I just picked the products for demo, which is fine. So it automatically adds all these columns. I just get rid of attachments and I just want to turn it into one column. So it's gonna look a little bit better. That's not a big deal. The main thing is that what's gonna be the selected item here? First of all, when I come back here, when someone clicks on this, let me add a button like show details or something like that. Insert button. So add, a button is added. And I can call it edit, all right? So when someone clicks on it, instead of select parent, I want to navigate to the other screen, edit prod, and you know I like fade. And finally, you have the contextual variable that you can pass from this screen to the other. Now you can play with your ID. So I can say item ID, and the item ID that I want to pass is gonna be this item, or whatever the item that I click the edit button on, dot ID. Close the curly bracket and the bracket, we are good. So. Now, if I run it and I click on edit, it takes me to the other screen. But when I am in this screen, I have another variable that is part of the context that came here from the parent screen, which was the SCR inventory items. I can use that to do exactly the same filter. So I can come back here and I can pick my item. I do exactly the same lookup and I look up from products for demo comma, and I can specify my filter, and the filter is going to be this record dot ID is equal to item ID, which came here as a part of the context. So I close this bracket, and boom, we are good. We are just left with adding a save button, so let me just finish the job by adding the button, and here I can click on this button, save, and just two lines of code here. So the first one is gonna be submit form, and that's gonna be form two, I guess. Yep, that's the one. And finally, navigate to the other screen, which is gonna be SCR inventory items. Close the bracket and done. So for the wireless earbuds, 
I can increase it to 1200. Tab away, I click on save. It takes me to the other screen and it's 1200, beautiful. Or the other one, let me click on edit. Let me make it 4100. Be careful, this modern form is not still complete. So if I just click on save, most probably the problem is still there. Oh no, it's updated, great. Sometimes when you click on it directly, it doesn't update the item there. This way, again, the form on the other screen is bulletproof. So if I come back here and I pick this gallery, whatever I do here, you can play with it as much as you want and no form is gonna break anywhere in your app. All right, it's always fun to get back to basics. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know where the like button is. Also a subscribe button, click, it's gonna be really appreciated. Enjoy your day, enjoy your weekend, and I'll see you soon in the next video.